Hello and thank you for joining me for another episode of Run Level Zero. For the last two months I've been using Netrunner as my primary desktop environment and it really says a lot for Netrunner that I've been able to stick with it for these past two months. I'm usually a desktop nomad and only spend a week or two with any one Linux distro. I've just really enjoyed Netrunner. Um, you can check out my, my review on it uh, in, in the reviews playlist on my channel. But here a couple weeks ago I began feeling the itch to move on and I was going to go back with my other favorite Manjaro Linux. Then I noticed this. Netrunner has teamed up with Manjaro to create a Netrunner rolling release uh, distro, rolling, rolling release uh, version. It is now available in 32 and 64 bit. It's actually been out in 32 bit for a couple of weeks now, but I wanted to wait for the 64 bit to get dropped uh, before doing my review. And I thought to myself, wow, you know, the best of both worlds. My two favorite distributions, Netrunner and Manjaro, just had a baby. So that is what we are reviewing today. This is the 64 bit version of Netrunner Rolling. Netrunner based on Manjaro. Now for those of you who may not know, Manjaro Linux is a Arch based Linux distribution and you can kind of think of it as the Linux Mint of Arch. It is Arch for the average user. Um, Arch is a rolling released uh, Linux distribution that uh, basically what that means is you only have to install it one time. Once you install the, the, the Arch operating system where there's Arch based derivatives such as Antergos, uh, Archbang, Manjaro, and now Netrunner Rolling, you don't have to reinstall the system just to upgrade the system. Just by the virtue of its rolling release cycle, you're going to always have the latest greatest version of your operating system. So that's really nice. Now, with rolling release distros, there can be some inherent instability with it. Uh, some, some rolling release distros, like Arch, can that they're known for their bleeding edge software. They can uh, can require a lot of user intervention uh, to get some patches working and to fix some of the instabilities that can occasionally come along. Not saying that Arch is unstable. Arch is a very stable operating system, but based on its bleeding edge, open release or rolling release update model, uh, from time to time there there can be some bugs that creep their way in. Well, Manjaro has handled that by maintaining their own repositories that are really uh, downstream a bit from Arch, so. <clears throat> They kind of act as an intermediary between you, the end user, and the Arch repos. So they take care of all those configurations and, and problem resolution on your behalf. So what you get is an even more stable bleeding edge rolling release distribution. Netrunner has come along and applied its excellent uh, desktop implementation. It, it runs KDE, uh, but it has a it has a beautiful, smooth, responsive implementation of KDE, and this is built now on top of the excellent base that is Manjaro. So let's take a look at what you get here. You have a beautifully themed, what I call a traditional desktop layout, that is one primary desktop with just a few icons. You have a shortcut to what's they're called computer. Uh, this utility will actually bring up lots of nice computer stats for you so you can get a brief overview of your computer system, your disk information, OS information, uh, common folders, battery, that sort of thing. You have a shortcut to your network drives and there's an excellent readme document on the desktop that will take you to uh, the Netrunner website. And This read this readme will tell you a bit about your uh, about your release. Uh, let's see here. Known issues. 
yeah, just, just some good general information as well as some great tutorials uh, built right in. So if you use a secure boot, how to make that work. You know, so this is really good. I've seen a lot of README files, but very few of them actually contain video tutorials, and this is this is really a nice feature. Now uh, moving on, you have one primary panel across the bottom. Beginning in the lower right hand corner, now uh, this little icon here is commonly referred to as the cashew, and it's a feature of the KDE desktop. When you click it, it will allow you to edit the settings for your panel. You can even adjust the position, add more widgets, and that sort of thing. The eye here next to it is actually a notification indicator. So if your system has any, not any notification, any uh, pending updates, uh, completed jobs, that's going to be here on this little eye. There's the calendar and clock utility, your network settings, volume control with access to the mixer, clipboard manager. This little flag here is an indicator showing me that I have additional language pack, packs available to install. And this icon, this snappy little guy, is uh, I believe it's Yawake. It might be Gwake, but I believe it's Yawake. Um, this is a drop-down panel or a drop-down terminal. And you just click on it to toggle it on or off. You can also toggle it on and off with the F12 key. And this is a modern terminal emulator a little plus button here it does support tabs so you can have multiple things going on in the background so that is a really handy thing to have uh, tr as is traditional in the central portion of this panel will display your open uh, running applications and on the left hand side you have a quick launch to Firefox which is the default web browser as well as Dolphin which is KDE's excellent uh, file manager. Uh, Dolphin is one of my favorites. Now it is the most resource intensive but it is really highly themable and customizable. You can do a lot of stuff in Dolphin. Uh, shows you how much space you have free in any particular area. You can resize, drag to resize your icons show hidden files. You can uh, split it to have two panels side by side if you're working with moving a lot of a lot of files, moving stuff around. Uh, under tools you can open a terminal. Uh, for a view, let's see if I can find it here under, I believe it's panels, yes, you can actually by toggling F4 or clicking here you can actually have an integrated terminal in your file browser so when you go into a new folder it automatically changes the directory for you so you can work within that folder in the terminal if you choose. Just a wonderful wonderful uh, file browser, file manager. The menu for Netrunner and Netrunner Rolling is the excellent kickstart menu. This is I think a vast improvement over the default KDE menu system. It's a more simplified uh, menu and Netrunner has done a great job with theming with this nice little underglow going on here. Uh, it does support pinning favorites which are what's on top here and the favorites that come by default are Voco Screen, your system settings, Octopi which is your uh, your package manager or graphical end for your package manager which is Pac-Man in the background and your system monitor. Let's pull open the system monitor right quick and take a look. Right now uh, our memory is running at 967 meg. Now this is running in a virtual uh, 2 gigabytes of RAM, two dedicated processors <coughs> and with it being KDE, KDE is one of the more resource intensive uh, desktop environments available for uh, Linux so you may want to take this into consideration. I would not recommend this for older systems but like I said this is running on two gigs of RAM and it's, it seems to be doing fine. So just keep that in, in the back of your mind uh, when you're deciding uh, whether or not to use a KDE based system. You know you really I would recommend newer hardware a minimum of four gig of RAM. 
So let's take a quick peek at some of the applications that come pre-installed. We're not going to cover all the applications that have been installed, but we are going to hit on a few here. There are a wide variety of games to help take up your free time, uh, including Steam. Steam has been configured for you. Under Graphics, of course, you have the, the GIMP, as well as Carbon, Krita. You're going to see all of these, or the majority of these, are going to be the uh, QT-based applications where, where possible, and that's because KDE is a QT-based desktop. For Internet, of course, Firefox is the default web browser. Uh, you have IM Contact Managers, Conversation for Instant Messaging, QT Transmission for your BitTorrent client, Skype is installed for you, as well as Thunderbird for your email client. Under Multimedia, Clementine is installed, which is a great music player, as well as Caden Live is installed and configured for you, and it works out of the box. It does a really good job. Uh, that is for your video editing. VLC is installed for you for your media player, as well as Voco Screen for screencasting, and this is actually my preferred screencaster here. It does a great job. Really easy to use. Under Office, you have the full LibreOffice suite, which is a modern uh, Microsoft Office compatible uh, office suite. For settings, you have a shortcut to the Manjaro settings manager, your print settings and your system settings. Let me take a moment to talk about Manjaro. Um, as far as its settings manager, Manjaro does, it has the hardware detection utility here. Manjaro hands down has in my opinion, what what is the best, most robust uh, hardware detection and, and driver management that I've seen in any Linux distribution, hands down. Most things are just going to work for you out of the box. So it's one of the reasons I love Manjaro so much. All right, moving on. Uh, back to the settings. Let's take a look at the system settings right quick. The KDE control panel is a great control panel. They've done a good job recently at slimming down their their choices here and really grouping their their control panels uh, items. The KDE control panel used to be a bit clustered, but now they have uh, really integrated uh, integrated their control panel items into into these groupings. If you hover over any particular icon, uh, you can see what's available inside. KDE uses KWIN as its window manager, so you get a lot of nice flashy desktop effects available for you. If you go into the uh, desktop effects uh, tab here, under the all effects tab, uh, you can turn those on and off however you like. So this is where you're going to get your magic lamp, your wobbly windows, desktop cube, all that stuff enabled right here for you. Uh, Netrunner has enabled a few of them for you, but they have taken a more conservative approach to their uh, desktop effects, which I really appreciate. They leave all that fine configuration. Uh, the more extreme desktop effects are up to the user. Moving on, let's see, under System, uh, you have the Add Remove software, which is, of course, Octopi, as I've already mentioned. Octopi is the QT-based uh, preferred Arch uh, GUI interface for its, its package management system, which is, which is Pac-Man. Now, this Octopi is usable. Octopi is a good front end. Uh, since this is based on Manjaro, you do have full uh, AUR support. Uh, installed and configured for you. So if you if you look in the default repository and you, you can't find what you're looking for, you can switch down to, to Yaourt and search the AUR. So this opens up a whole new, whole new world of available packages for you. That said, I really wouldn't consider this very new user friendly. Uh, there are no categories here. So you, if you're looking for a new web browser, for example, 
you have to know what web browser you're looking for. You have to know that you're going to search for, say, Opera. Um, there is no web browser or internet button, per se, that you could click on. And for this reason alone, I'm hesitant to recommend Netrunner Rolling for a, a new Linux user. I would recommend if you're a new Linux user that you start with the Kubuntu based uh, uh, Netrunner. But if you are more adventurous, if you are a more advanced computer user that's new in Linux, uh, yeah, go ahead and play with Octopi. Just go right for uh, Netrunner Rolling. Just a word of caution there. Let's see, back to system. Let's see, Gparted is installed. That's great uh, GUI for handling your disk partitions. That's really handy if you if you use a lot of uh, thumb drives. You can customize the grub uh, for you if you want. And yes, I was right, that was Yakwake that's installed. For utilities, you have K3B for burning optical media. It's a good uh, it's, it's a good program. I like K3B. Let's see, and that's really about it. You have your, of course, your power session where you can shut down, restart, log out, and that sort. I I am thrilled to to see Netrunner rolling come come out. This this is a dream come true for me. In fact, I am running this now as my new primary desktop. Uh, so give it a try. Let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to leave your questions, comments, or emotional outbursts in the comments section below. Uh, just please keep it civil. Give Netrunner Rolling a try. Let me know what you think of it. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope to be with you again soon for another video.